How do? There's your main man, Stephen. I don't know what they can see, guys. There's a lake that is frozen. Very cold today. It's been a while. Um, two weeks ago today, I went and interviewed Nick, ex squaddy. If you haven't seen that one, go and have a look. Good lad. Um, you all right? Hey, up. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Come on, Stevie. Ex squaddy, uh, very brave. A little bit younger than me, or so he thinks. Not sure he looked it, but yeah. Ex squaddy, lived with PTSD, mental health for 30 years. Uh, poured his heart out. Takes some doing that, guys, on camera. Uh, he's had some good feedback from some of his managers, which is always nice. So I'm going to talk about Lorraine. Before I do, a couple of things. Uh, Arch, K-Wing Massive, those that are new to the channel, welcome new subscribers. Welcome old subscribers, anyone who's watching this video. Like I say, I've been rough as a bear's ass. Yeah, not left the house for two weeks, nothing to do with the channel. Uh, I'm back. I will be vlogging next four days, I'm going to share them out. Got an interview to put up, I'm going to put it up Saturday morning, the interview. Um, and I'll put one up midweek. Yeah, it does feel good. Um, so Arch sent me a link. Facebook page, prison officer recruitment in this country. It's flat on its ass. There's no retention of staff. Uh, there's only young lasses going for the job in male prison, lads prisons. You know, it can be a physical job. You need lads in lads prisons. I've talked enough about that, but the advert, the Facebook page. So multiculturalism and diversity is our strength it's turning out diversity is not our strength now yeah and multiculturalism i'll tell you what that is it's our six cats and stephen two sphinxes bald ones a siamese two british short hair and a domestic cat and stephen all get on really well yeah different habits but they get on no fighting that's as close as multiculturalism as you're gonna get yeah animals living together um, it's just not happening. So the Facebook page, yeah, not a white, not a white lad, male, to be seen on the adverts. You know, perhaps that's why people aren't going for the jobs. It's not a good job. Uh, very few people in that job I came across from ethnic backgrounds. Uh, some good ones, some not so good. But yeah, you know, you need to... Uh, you need to expand your horizons because I, I watched it, man. It's just bullshit. Bullshit. Crap. Uh, people coming on saying, you know, oh, we're making a difference. No, you're not. Hey, we're looking at police cells now in this country. If you're not from this country, using police cells, our prisons are full again. So, before I move on to talk about this uh, very sad tale... Yeah, overcrowding, including IPP prisoners, lads who have been locked up and it's a death sentence. I'm going to do a vlog about that over the weekend. Uh, we've got the least staff, I believe it's early 20s, 22, 23,000 staff, 34 when I were in and we're on his ass. And the population's growing and they're building new prisons. Right, like I say, it's good to be out. It's around freezing. But I'm well wrapped, so let's get on it. So this young lady, Lorraine, was kicked to death. She was a prison custody officer. Prison officer, public sector. If you work in the private sector, you're called a prison custody officer. Same job, yeah? Private se sector, historically, less pay, less staff. That was the only difference. You know, I got ridiculed horrendously when I went to Strange Ways Public Sector Prison and I'd worked at HMP Forest Bank Private Sector, yeah? I'll tell you now, half the staff I worked with at Strange Ways wouldn't have survived, they couldn't have done it. Uh, a lot of them didn't have the bottle, full of hot air, fact. And they wouldn't have been able to do it. Two of you on a wing with 86 prisoners. 
A lot of that time you're on your own. The other member of staff had to leave the wing. Anyway, this last kicked to death. She was a court officer. So here's the procedure. When people go to court and other escorts, yep, they will go down to a prison reception where you are booked in and out of prison and you will be discharged. Uh, placed on sweat boxes, which are prison vehicles called sweat boxes for obvious reasons, not the most pleasant of places. And you will be taken to court. So let me tell you, this, this is my big problem with what's happening now. Yeah, and the physicality of working in a male jail. And it's not only about male jails either, because I've, I've told this before, HMP style, female jail. There was a lass, pregnant, eight months pregnant. Uh, she was unwell, not wired right, not taking her meds. She absolutely destroyed two teams, two four officer teams in full riot gear of lads. Wrecked them, ragged them all out, cell, wrecked them. Me? Would I want to go in a cell with uh, a last restraint, a last? No, I won't fancy that. Somebody who was pregnant, quite definitely not. However, mental health, mental illness, unmedicated, very dangerous people. And this last, Lorraine, bless her and bless her family, yeah, weren't prepared for what happened. The lad was reported as being schizophrenic. Uh, I think he got done. Manslaughter, diminished responsibility and was going to be sent to a forensic unit, mental health hospital for the rest of his life. She went to the cell to get him out. Procedure is putting him on and off vans, up to court, they're cuffed. Again, I've talked about this before, you know, um, it's a physical job. This, last, this lad dragged her to the floor, kicked her a couple of times, fractured her jaw, she ended up in hospital, and two days later she died. At the time, 2015, not a lot in the press. Disgusting, really. If a copper had been killed, it had been on the news and front page. Middle of the paper, tiny little column. Yes, she was a gran, just doing a job, turning up. But here's the thing. Having worked in segregation units, solitary confinement, and the healthcare, where we had lads like this lad. Now, this lad was physically big as well. Schizophrenic, very unpredictable. I don't know whether he was medicated. He was dangerous. So if you had a lad like that going to court, I would, on shift, personally escort him down. Um, these people were quite often on unlock protocols. It's beautiful up here. Just gonna show you guys, cause I haven't been a week. Main man, lovely, peaceful, very crisp, I believe we say. These people are quite often on unlock protocols. They come out on their own. Dangerous, unpredictable, superhuman strength, adrenaline, whatever it is, superhuman. So I would take them down to reception and we'll put them in a holding cell on their own. Big board outside, three officer unlock, warning, unpredictable, dangerous. I would then go to the front desk in reception, I'd tell the senior officer, yeah, he's in charge of reception. Got one there, dangerous, three officer unlock. I would tell everyone in reception. That's as much as I could do. That lad would probably come out if you had a good SO, and at one time or other, we had good SOs in reception. They would pass it on to the staff. There'd be two lads, two lasses, whatever, on a sweat box, book people out. They would take them on cuffs onto the sweat box. Court, same. When they got to court, cuffed off the bus one at a time into holding cells. Now, how, how far that message went when they left, I don't know. Yeah? some dangerous individuals. Court, court officers, escort officers, I would think people would see that as a low risk job. But not when you're dealing with unpredictable people. Sadly, this lass lost her life. Now, Serco, 
Private company, big company, they're into everything now, like a lot of things, are in court. There were warnings this lass herself had said, you know, dangerous situation, whatever. Um, they're being taken to account. Whether they'll get found guilty or not, I don't know. Uh, there'll be witnesses coming forward, obviously. Something like this, it'll have affected the company, or should. And you know, it should be everywhere. There should be warnings everywhere about things like this. I'm gonna leave it there, guys. When I get back, if I can find the Facebook page, I'll put a link in the pinned comment. So you can have a look at the Facebook prison recruitment page. Tell me what you think. In the comments to this video, if you would like me to vlog anything, current affairs, because there's a lot of shit going down that's pissing me right off. Um, Put it in the comments and I'll read you the article. It's a short article, but you know, we need to remember these people. Sad state of affairs. Uh, young lass taken too soon, leaving a family. Shocking. Parting shot as always. Stephen? Stephen? Oi, waggy tail, come here. Come, come here, <laughs> come here, laddo. Yeah. Good boy. There we go. Thanks for everyone who's supporting the channel. Patreon, buy me a brew. I'll see there. It's only a very short article, this, guys. Um, like I said, proper sad tale. So as I'm walking back with Stephen... And incidentally, it is nice to be out and nice to be speaking to you again. Two lads on push bikes, young lads coming down the path. Put me leg against Stephen's side. Just moved into one side so they could pass. Both of them, big smiles. Thank you very much. I said you're welcome. And again, big smiles. Doesn't take much, does it, guys? The fact that I'm reflecting on that shows... You know, just what's missing sometimes nowadays. It takes, it takes no doing, does it? Okay. Prison guard kicked to death by inmate who lashed out with no warning. A prison guard was kicked to death by a prisoner whilst he was being moved from a cell to a van. Lorraine Barwell, 54, from Romford, Essex, was kicked repeatedly by Humphrey Burke, 28, at Blackfriars Crown Court in June 2015. Seven years for this to get to court, guys. The first blow knocked the grandmother to her knees and the second fractured her jaw, causing a brain hemorrhage. She died two days later after a life support machine was switched off. Prison custody officer Annie Monerman told Prospo House Crown Court, I believe Bert was just sitting there in his cell. I could see Lorraine talking at the door saying, come on, we need to go. I think she then walked up to him, cuffed him, but when they walked to the door of the cell, he fell to the floor. But as soon as they pulled him into the L position, he just lifted his head and kicked her. It was that quick. I don't know whether putting him in prone position or whatever, recovery position or something like that. Miss Monoman also detailed how there was no warning at all, but it did not come across as aggressive she said from my position it wasn't an aggressive kind of thing he just kicked straight out and she went straight down burke who is a paranoid schizophrenic admitted manslaughter due to diminished responsibility after a series of hearings he was sent to psychiatric hospital indefinitely in january this year however security giant circle is facing a huge fine for breaching health and safety laws Gordon Menzies, prosecuting, said in January 2015, Mr. Burke was identified as being a risk to staff, and so he should be as well. He was someone described as aggressive and ready to launch an attack at anyone opening his cell. This is what I'm talking about here. You know, people need to be warned about this. Change of staff, somebody who doesn't know him, someone who's not aware. If there's no warning there, you know, anyone could have been opening that door. Miss Barwell raised concerns about what was being asked of staff. Nothing was done by Serco in response to what she raised. Serco disputes the claim. 
the claim made, the hearing continues. Like I say, dangerous job, risky job, and there's some dangerous people there. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Uh, I'll see you there.